say are humans oldest domesticated animals older than even like chickens or goats uh, that, that humans and dogs have been hanging around together for at least 15,000 years and, and actually there are some interesting studies that suggest that it's more like 100,000 years which is mind-blowing because our species is only about 115 or 120,000 years old that, that almost for our entire history as a species we've been associated with these dogs. With the domestication of dogs and becoming man's best friend, over time we have adapted and learned how to train them to become socialized with not only humans, but other dogs as well. Unless you're going to stay in your house all the time with your dog, then sooner or later you're going to need to go to the pet store or on a walk or, uh, you know, to the vet hospital and, and your dog is going to encounter other dogs and it's not going to go well for you or for your dog if they're aggressive towards other dogs or antisocial. It, it diminishes the, the pleasure that you can get from your dog and it makes your dog unhappy too. I didn't realize that most dogs need a little bit of training and guidance, so I started doing dog training and then I realized it was mostly the owners that needed the training. After training, I realized that Charlie had an enormous amount of energy. I needed to find a way for him to get socialized and also to use up some of that energy. Uh, I think dogs get a lot of pleasure from interacting with members of their own species and, and if you can teach them to play nice and not bite and, and share their things, then just like everybody, little kids and adults too, I think that they get a lot of joy from, from interacting with their own species. They have thought processes, they like to have things to think about and things to occupy their time and I, I think that it helps them to be to be more well-rounded and to be happier when they have something to do, whether it's a job or just learning tricks or doing obedience or, or any of those things. We actually learned a lot of training from other trainers from around the country. We went to a lot of workshops where we learned how to handle different situations like a socialization workshop, dogmanship workshop. We're constantly looking for um, education opportunities, making sure that every dog is comfortable and happy. We don't let dogs harass other dogs. We make sure that we keep it quiet so that it's very comfortable for every dog, including nervous and anxious dogs. We do a lot of special case dogs that have certain kinds of issues, and we help them work through it and get better and better, build better relationships with their owners. You know, it, it's hard enough to be a, a best friend with a member of your own species, but to be a best friend with a, a member of another species is, is amazing. And I can't think of any other example of that in, in all of our relationships with other types of animals. And in that respect, I think not only have we influenced their evolution distinctly and, and profoundly, but they've influenced our evolution too. I, I think that we are the creatures that we are in large part due to our association with dogs. We train them with food and um, with leash work. So we teach the owner how to get the most out of their dog and how to um, achieve certain positions and um, obedience so that the, own, the dog will listen to the owner, not just the trainer. Coming when they're called and, uh, and staying when they're asked to, uh, those I think are, are the most important things, but, but I think physical activity in general is very important for dogs of every breed and age and size. I train a Chihuahua the same as I train a Great Dane for the most part. You're softer with a softer personality dog, and that could be the Great Dane. The Chihuahua could have a stronger personality and you're firmer with them. It's more about the, the individual dog. All breeds have you know, their standard behaviors, but at the same time, each dog is different. So I try to do it depending on the dog. Most people don't realize that when a dog turns their head, that means that they really do not want to be approached. People love dogs so much that they want to go up and approach and touch every dog. And if they just wait for a dog to take their time and approach them at their own pace, dogs would appreciate it more. They're not subtle creatures. They're, they're very good at telegraphing 
what they're thinking. And I think that with even just uh, five minutes of training or watching a few YouTube videos, you can recognize when a dog is scared or when they're feeling aggressive or when they want you to approach or don't want you to approach. When you want to ask the owner if they like to be pet, and you can also ask where they like to be pet, because some dogs are hand shy, meaning that if we reach for them, they don't want us to pet on top of their head. They'd rather us touch their chest or under their chin. Dogs sometimes are frightened by fast movements or loud noises or little kids that move fast and don't don't know their own hand strength. Uh, any of those things can make a dog afraid. And unfortunately, sometimes when dogs are afraid, they lash out and they, they do things that they're embarrassed of later. But in their case, uh, you know, it can cause some, some really significant harm. When people are nervous, they're more likely to get bit than when they're relaxed. If they feel uncomfortable in a situation, they should trust their instinct. If, if something's giving them the creeps or they feel the hair go up on the back of their neck, it means walk away. I think just being aware of what a dog looks like when he's happy or when he's scared or when he's approachable or not is the best way to do that. And then being aware of how the dog's acting as you approach him. And as far as breed discrimination, it really has to do with their temperament. I don't think that there's one breed that is more awful than another. It's really all about figuring out if the individual dog is, gets along well with other dogs or other people. Not that pit bulls and bully breeds are more likely to, to cause a problem, it's that if they do, it's going to be a big problem. Speaking of pit bulls and, and that type of breed, I know hundreds of these dogs. I have one. Uh, almost every member of my staff has one too, and they're all some of the sweetest, nicest, most gentle dogs I've ever met. That being said, she's a powerful dog, uh, and, and I think that, that pit bulls and the like aren't any more aggressive than any other breed, in some cases I think less, but I think that when they do get aggressive, they do a lot more damage than other breeds. So this dog here, if he bit you, it might not even cause damage. However, a pit bull is much stronger. They have a stronger head, stronger jaw, and they can be stronger personalities. You know, when a chihuahua is yipping and, and uh, pulling on your pant leg, it's kind of funny, but when an 80 pound pit bull is doing the same thing, not so funny. Uh, and I think that's the reason that, that they get a bad rap because when they do become aggressive, that, that there's a lot of potential for, for damage there. But you have to be cautious with powerful dogs because there are physical superiors and they could potentially hurt us if we misread them or if we provoke uh, an aggressive response. Uh, but I, I don't think that any particular breed is more aggressive than any other. Some of the nicest dogs I know are, are Rottweilers or, or German Shepherds or Pit Bulls. I think dogs are important to people because they give unconditional love. As far as companionship and helping people get through a lot of hard times. They uh, reduce stress and anxiety in a lot of people. Um, they're goofy and they're funny, so you're having a bad day, you just watch some dogs playing or interacting, and it's, it's very enjoyable, soothing, and comic relief. For the most part, especially if a dog is trained, Dogs don't give people hard times as much as the world does. The concept of a pet dog is kind of a new thing, only within the past few hundred years, but ironically, that's, that's what they're best at. That even though we've all been hanging around together for so many thousands of years, they've really only found what, what they're the very best at recently. And, and just having them on your lap or sitting beside you on the couch is really the, the, the best thing that they can do for us, I think. They just, they make us happy. Mm -hmm.